Okay, now, now I want to I wanna move uh, some of the things you talk a lot about on your blog is the democratic process and how a proper education uh, would help our culture and the democratic process of, uh, on the, the way our, our nation has been founded, the participation of, of the people. And maybe you could comment on why is it that uh, in the education system we have now that, I mean, what's wrong with it? Why doesn't it help the democratic process? And why would a more uh, dynamic, more student-centered uh, education process, you know, why is that? Maybe you could explain that to us a little bit. Yeah, well, uh, again, it's a, a long, long story and, you know, hundreds of hours of thought. And obviously on that blog site, uh, hundreds of uh, pages of commentary about um, th th this uh, relationship between uh, a proper education for democracy and um, what I would call uh, an improper education. Democracy is about individual freedom first and foremost. And, and if you look at schools, um, there's very little that the schools uh, have to do with individual freedom. It's, it's primarily about um, acculturation, um, socialization, um, and doing what other people tell you to do rather than you uh, encountering both um, ide or ideas, uh, events, uh, the stuff of life. Um, being in a, a place where people talk about it from different perspectives and then um, figuring out why your perspective is yours and theirs might be theirs and talking about to them um, it, it, this negotiation process that takes place in a good democracy to get to the best ideas. All right? School is not about negotiation. It's not about individuals sharing individual ideas. And it's terribly undemocratic. I mean, the, the, the teacher is a dictator. The, there's no doubt about it. The teacher has all the power in the classroom. The it dictates everything, even if you can get up to go to the bathroom, which is nobody looks at, but that's the most absurd thing that ever was created in the history of humankind, that if you got to go to the bathroom, you have to ask somebody, <laughs> you know, or, you know, what kind of world is it that where you, the teacher says, do you really have to go? And the teacher's right. It, it, within the context of the school, Students do lie because they want to get out of the classroom. Well, what kind of a human being are you encouraging one to become in, a, in an environment like that? So when I read uh, about democracy, and I spent the last 10 years really trying to understand fully both what democracy is, um, how it, 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 it evolved in... in um, uh, early on uh, in the founders of this country's minds um, and then how it's played out uh, over the course of the history of the American nation. Um, democracy is, is really, um, uh, as Dewey says, it, it, it's, it's the best uh, way that we have discovered yet for human beings to live together um, as free individuals, um, and he didn't say this, but he implied it, uh, without there being nothing but chaos and, and, and butchery. Um, and I, you can look around us right now and you can say, well, looks like it hadn't gotten to that point yet because uh, there does seem to be a lot of chaos and even butchery. Um, but the idea was that for every human being to feel that he or she was free, even though they had to conform to certain laws, was to give the people the right and the obligation to make laws for themselves. So, you know, you go back to Locke and that social contract, um, democracy 
is a, 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 a social and political system that is meant to give human beings as much possible freedom as they can possibly have and still live within the context of a society where the forces that work um, the chaos doesn't obliterate freedom. It's kind of a, 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 an ironic balance uh, between law that allows freedom by restricting freedom and then freedom within the context of uh, law, this restriction, but it's okay according to the people who wrote our founding documents because the restrictions are okay by the people. Well, th there's another component to that, and again, if you go back to the, um, the, the uh, cons not the, con the Declaration of Independence, one of the most prescient <laughs> phrases in there that people ignore, um, and, and it, it, it seems to have been written as the uh, primary reason given to people for uh, the American nation, or not yet nation, um, the states, uh, the colonies going to war with uh, um, England was because the king didn't respect the opinions of men. Right. Now, wow, you know, I mean, just think about that for a moment, that that's what we were fighting over? Well, yeah, because our opinions in terms of being human beings are the most important thing that exists because that is who we are. I mean, everybody's got flesh and everybody's got skin, but what makes us unique people, besides Gordon looks different than I do, all right, is the way we think. I mean, that's where humans, that's where humanity is found. That's where our um, special uh, being resides and being, I mean, our human being is it resides in our intellect um, and that intellect whether anybody would like to or not is independent I mean even people under the strictest of dictatorships or locked up in prison or that they, they think for themselves and again we don't like to believe that we think that we can get people to think like they should think but right. they're not going to get to if they don't think they should think that way, they're not going to think that way. What the school system has done is pretty much tell them that, well, if you want to be a good person, you need to think the way that good people think. And good people think like I do, the teacher, or whoever it is that in some way empowers me uh, to be a teacher. And so what you do is instead of celebrating individuality, you fight like hell to uh, make sure that, that people understand that individuality is, is wrong and that conformity is better. That society needs conformity more than it needs original thought and therefore, that conforming is what you do in school to become a good citizen. That isn't how democracy works. Democracy works when people with different opinions, and that's why the founders liked that idea of opinions and were mad at old George uh, for not respecting them. Democracy, again, this means for having civil society where people are free, people exercise their freedom in the public discussions that should be happening, they express their opinions, and the majority of people, or at least good numbers of people, talk about those ideas as long, along with all the other ideas that are put on the table, and because they understand that government works in their best interest, they work to find the best possible answer to the questions that arise, 
And because they're citizens of a society they love, they are willing to give up, as with having their freedom restricted by law, they're willing to give up, all right, their own ideas if their own ideas aren't as good as someone else's. And that's how we move along. Yeah. Schools don't have, they, there's so very little of that <laughs> in schools that you wonder what country the school system was invented in, and there is an answer. It, it was not the country called the United States of America that is written in, you know, of in the Declaration and the Constitution. It is the United States of capitalism that certain people use their freedom to, to, in order to co-opt that general idea of freedom for all. All right, Every, all men are created equal unless you work as Gordon does for a cement company and he has a boss and he's not equal with that <laughs> boss. All right, in fact, our culture is really known, our society is known for great inequality right. and we're living in an era now where that equality, inequality has been recognized as being a prominent feature uh, of American society. Well, let me just frame that. How would you get a free and educated people to agree to give up the power that they are entitled to and the right to the goodies that the society has to offer and give them over to somebody else named uh, Edelman or uh, uh, Trump or uh, yeah. y y how, and, and again, the re way you do that is your schools, instead of inculcating people in the values of democracy, inculcate them in capitalism. Yeah. I, as you were uh, talking, the, um, as you were coming into this point, um, as a kid, uh, we had pets, you know, pups, and if I was abusing a pup or a dog, uh, I'd get scolded, and you know, they'd say, uh, you, my, and mom would say, dumb animals, you can't mistreat a dumb animal, they don't know any better, you gotta just, you gotta treat them with respect because, you know, they'll just let you abuse them, or whatever, you know, and, but, to me, when, when, we, when, when, uh, when you were, Speaking, I was thinking about the kids, and of course, you know I have grandkids. But uh, that you means know, you have kids. I have kids and grandkids. You can't have one without the other. And uh, well, you can. You can have kids without grandkids. But <laughs> anyway, I feel pretty fortunate. But that's the most thing that I want them to learn is I. And I I've told uh, one grandson in particular, you know, that you know, trying to get him to read and and and. I say, you've got to get smart, because if you're not, people will take advantage of you. They'll treat you just like an animal. And, and that's what I see, you know, a lot of times with the, these kids. Um, and I was so naive when I was in high school. I would just believe anything, you know. And, and that was kind of, a, of my life, you know. And, uh, I, I'm very fortunate things worked out the way it did, because there could have been some people that could have really took advantage of me. And, and some did, you know. Uh, and, but when you were talking, I was thinking, you know, that's the way it's went. You know, if our kids aren't educated, it's easy for, there, I think it was Barman Bailey said there was a sucker born every minute. And, and that, you know, again, you look around, there are a great number of people who benefit greatly by keeping people suckers. Exactly, that's what I was thinking, you know, and, and if, we're, if we're not on top of things, you know, our children are going are gonna to be naive like I was or worse. And, you know, the thing is, is that that supposedly um, is the promise of education, but again, if you look around at the educated people in our society, educated meaning that they've gone to school, um, and you look at how often they do get suckered, or how often people in front of their faces play them to be suckers and again you watch advertising on TV it isn't exactly you know a rational argument that 
it, 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 yeah, you think about where those advertisers who make you know, a lot of money every year um, cajoling people into doing things, um, what is their angle? Do they treat the American public as intelligent and thoughtful, capable of knowing when they're, you know, getting a good deal and when they're getting a bad deal? No. Uh, three quarter, you know, it seems like three quarters of those ads are about, hey, sucker. Right. And, and you, you just, you can just go online and Google the debt problem. With yeah. In the United States, people are so in debt, they're slaves. You know? In debt, and, and, and what happened with the, uh, you know, the housing crisis, and uh, where people were uh, buying or getting loans with, uh, you know, the, the mortgage company, no down, and we'll give you 5,000 bucks to buy the house. Or, well, wait a second, what is going on? Where people can't look at, you know, the interest rates when they, they were given, you know, reasonable interest rates, but then there was, a, a, I can't remember what they called it, but five years out, there was a, uni, a balloon payment, they called it. And people thought, well, uh, we can do that. We can do that. And why would you think you could do that? Right. You know, what, what was going to happen? Was your income going to go up like a sky? There's so many. Again, I'll give you another example. Um, how many people in this country know the role that the stock market plays? Right. Very few. All right. And and nobody explains that to you. And so maybe they give you a. They'll tell you it's the greatest damn thing that ever happened. It's the engine of of uh, our economy. For some. Well, that's what they don't say. But we. Yeah. And they'll tell you that we're a very wealthy company. Country. Or I said con company. I think I, 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 that was a, one of those slips that they attribute, you know, Freud talked about. But th th there's so much um, suckering. And again, the worst is how people are treated when it comes to electing their representatives. I mean, look at what, what, what is out there in yes. terms of political advertising or even uh, the kind of uh, s speeches that politicians uh, give these days. Yeah. It's not new, by the way. Um, it, it's not like this just happened. Uh, you can go back to, uh, I don't know when it began, but you can look back in American history, you can see how people uh, bought into such things as, um, uh, well, the, the way that we've treated it for instance, uh, Latin American countries, uh, right. uh, our support of dictators since uh, uh, the turn of, before the turn of the century. Yeah. You know, where were the American people? Well, they were listening to people who they were convinced were smarter than them. Yeah. Well, if that's true, that there are people that are smarter than them, and and they can't decide even who those smarter people are, then you don't have a much of a participatory democracy. Yeah, I that whole issue of um, I think the, the the public being in the dark about foreign policies, a lot of foreign policies, and uh, I was I was talking to you earlier. It wasn't until I was in college that uh, I would I read some. Uh, liberation theology and the theologians were mentioning the uh, and look the, what the, happened the, to those priests right they, got they, should have been, they should have been raping young boys rather than out there trying to you know liberate their nations yeah but I didn't know anything about a lot of that stuff in Latin America, Latin America until I was in college and didn't have any idea and there's a lot of people I talk to now uh, uh, that are older than me, and I'll I'll I'll, oh, talk, no. I'll talk to them, and they, they have no idea. No, and they have no idea now of uh, you know what happened um, during World War One or before World War One to the Ottoman uh, Empire, which has everything to do with with what's going on in the Middle East. They have no idea that the Americans helped to overthrow uh, democratically elected um, uh, uh, Iranian. Uh, president, they have no idea about 
why we became so friendly with the Saudi Arabians who are yeah. whose religion is really the the religion of ISIS. <laughs> All of that is like we're blank on that, and yet we go to the polls and vote. And this is America, you know, the United States has a pretty high graduation rate from high school. Most people have had a high school education. And yet they go out and they vote. There were a couple of studies done, I think it was before, around 2004, about the um, uh, information uh, that um, uh, Americans had uh, concerning the issues that were a part of the election cycle then. And a very conservative, well, libertarian organization called the CATO, it's either CATO or CATO, uh, C-A-T-O Institute, and then the Brookings Institute, which is middle, um, left, not left-leaning, but um, liberal. Uh, they did studies and they found out that people virtually knew nothing right. about the candidates or, um, the issues that, that, that were coming up in that election. That's scary. Yeah. Plus, she had a nice smile, you know. Right. That's what I voted for. 